Good evening and welcome to the August 8th meeting of the Beaver Creek Parks Recreation and Culture Board. I hereby call this meeting to order and uh, we will begin with a roll call, please. Mr. Corbett? Here. Mrs. Heaton? Here. Mrs. Meyer? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Uh, Mrs. Fulcher is not with us this evening. Great. Thank you, Jackie. You also have uh, board members have in front of you a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. And once you've had a chance to look at that, I will accept a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And then you also have in front of you the minutes from our July 11th meeting. Um, hopefully uh, you've had a chance to look at those. If you not, take another minute. And uh, if you see no changes, I'll accept the motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank aye. you, minutes. And agenda approved. And we have a new presenter tonight. Uh, I think uh, we're going to hear a report on the Natural Resource Management Plan, and that is our intern, Trinity Raber. Welcome. All right. Hello, everybody. My <laughs> name's Trinity. Um, like you said, I've served as the park's intern this summer. It's been a really great experience. And one of my main projects this summer has been creating a natural resource management plan for the city. So that's what I'm going to share with you all tonight. So the Natural Resource Management Plan has been created in pursuit of accreditation. Um, the next accreditation cycle for the division is in 2025. So we are currently in the process of getting different plans together, getting everything ready so we can go through that accreditation process. Um, the division wanted a clearly written plan for how to manage Beaver Creek's parks and green spaces. Um, a lot of what is included in the plan are practices that are already in place by the division, but they weren't clearly written down in one space, so we wanted to kind of encompass them all in one area. The plan considers how to best maintain and enhance the city's natural resources. So this is focusing at enhancing the different natural capital and green spaces within the city of Beaver Creek and looking for ways that we can improve them and have community members best use them and have access to them. And finally, the Natural Resource Management Plan will provide the division with realistic measures that can easily be implemented now, as well as goals for the future that will benefit the community overall. Um, one of the biggest objectives with the creation of this plan was to have realistic measures that we can actually put into place instead of just things that we're looking toward in the long run. Those are also very important parts of the plan, but um, we wanted things that we can start working on right now and get them into place. So when we're discussing um, the Natural Resource Management Plan in terms of the mission, scope, and values of the division, the mission of the Beaver Creek Parks Recreation and Culture Division is to deliver recreational experiences that enhance the quality of life. And in order to be able to provide recreational experiences that enhance quality of life, you need natural resources and parks that are in good shape, they're safe, um, they just are able to serve their community well, so that is kind of how the mission ties into this plan. Um, the scope of this plan, this will apply to all parks within city limits, so all Beaver Creek parks. And the Natural Resource Management Plan will further safety and collaboration, which are two key values of parks, recreation, and culture. Um, we're looking for safe parks and then collaborating with other natural resource agencies and entities across the Miami Valley. So one big portion of the Natural Resource Management Plan is the creation of parks categories. Um, so I came up with this idea through reading some other natural resource management plans from other counties and other cities. And basically there are three different categories that have been created to establish some general guidelines for park management across Beaver Creek's parks. So how it works is parks are sorted into three different categories. We have category one, which is high frequency, category two, which is medium frequency, and category three, which is low frequency. And the parks are sorted into these categories based on a few different factors. There's um, the main factor is how often these parks are visited, how many people are using these parks. But then we also look at the size of the park, how many facilities we have in the park, and some other things like that. So here I have included, it's a little bit small to read, but there are the parks categories and some of their definitions. Um, like I said, category one is parks with high frequency, so parks that experience the highest volume of traffic. Category two has a medium volume of traffic, and category three has a relatively low volume of traffic. A few of the parks that um, fall into category one include Dominic Lafino Park and Rotary Park. A few of the parks in category two include Fox Run Park and Shout Park. And a few of the parks in category three include Royal Point Park and the Overlook Reserve. 
So the natural resource management plan is kind of split into two different subsections. We have resource goals and then we have stewardship goals. Um, the thought process behind this was in order to you know, have resources that we're able to manage, we want to look at the health of the resources and how we're best able to maintain those and what practices we can put forth to best protect the health of these resources. So there are four different resource goals that I'll go over with you tonight. Um, our first goal is to continue to preserve the land that we have by caring for the current levels of natural capital within Beaver Creek. Some of the objectives behind achieving this goal include maintaining the current level of maintenance that we have within the parks and ensuring that parks employees are up to date on what we want the resources to be working towards, what we want the health of the resources to be. Our second goal is to research and introduce methods of increasing biodiversity within parklands in order to bolster the health of Beaver Creek's natural resources. So one of the biggest objectives with this bullet point is working towards introducing more native species within the parks and working to remove invasive species such as honeysuckle, which we've done a very good job at doing so far. Our third natural resource goal is to dedicate more time for volunteers or school trips to come out to different parks around the city, especially those where we have a lot of trails or focusing on native species. Um, the idea behind this is just simply getting people to get out into their natural environment and connect with the parks more. Um, some ideas that we had were connecting with the school system, um, local 4-H clubs, sports teams, groups that need service hours, any of those, and just kind of establishing more relationships where we're able to get more people into the parks and exploring their environment. And our final resource goal is to protect natural resources in parks from threats of urbanization, development, and park operations to encompass noise and light pollution, degradation of air quality, and other sources of pollution. So a few of the objectives that we can work towards with achieving this goal is ensuring that we are mowing at proper times of day. We're not, you know, um, increasing like noise pollution by um, mowing outside of different hours. Um, we're using the, we're researching the kinds of fertilizer we're using, which we already do, but continuing to upkeep that and just looking at, you know, how we are maintaining the parks and ensuring that they are safe for all um, Beaver Creek residents to go into. So moving on to stewardship goals, this section is, <coughs> pardon me, very important because as I said before, we want to ensure that Beaver Creek residents are able to explore their environment and get more in touch with their natural resources. Mm -hmm. So our first goal is to continue to connect Beaver Creek residents with the parks and the land within them specifically. Um, parks and Recreation does a great job already at offering programs that people want to interact with and they go out and ensure that they do interact with. So we want to continue to maintain those levels of interaction as well as um, research and survey different residents throughout Beaver Creek to see what kinds of programs we can offer that would best serve them. Um, our second stewardship goal is to take steps to implement more environmental education and environmental awareness for those that may possess little knowledge on the subject. Some of the objectives that we can work towards for this goal would be um, maybe offering nature hikes that residents can go on and just kind of see more of what's in their own backyard, see what kind of trees are out there. Um, or another idea that we had was maybe having seminars or lectures taught by naturalists or other environment, uh, environmental experts so that people can learn more about what's in their backyard. Our third stewardship goal is to create more innovative projects involving natural resources within Beaver Creek Parks and to look for ways to expand these projects elsewhere in the community. The idea behind this goal came from the Insect Hotel at Fox Run Park. Um, a Girl Scout troop created that and that is just a really great way for people who visit the park to see insects that they might have not encountered before and just kind of learn more about that natural environment. And it's also a great project because it doesn't take up that much space, it's relatively easy to construct, and it just benefits everyone in the community. So um, some objectives with this goal would be implementing more things like that. So insect hotels, maybe butterfly blinds, something with beehives if we consider that um, in other parks around Beaver Creek and potentially in Spring House Park. And our fourth stewardship goal is to establish and or further relationships with other area natural resource agencies and entities in order to optimize alignment of city and park responsibilities as they relate to natural resource management. So the biggest idea behind this goal is just collaborating and connecting with other natural resource management groups. Um, some that we had thought of to collaborate with include the Marianist Environmental Education Center. Um, they preserve the prairie land, which is across from Springhouse Park. And I know that they do a lot of work with native species and restoration, so they could be a great resource, as well as different groups from the University of Dayton or Wright State or just naturalist groups in the area. 
Um, finally, monitoring progress. So the category guidelines that we created will be shared with seasonal employees during onboarding. Um, summertime is the most popular time for parks and recreation, and we want to ensure that when we have seasonal employees come on board, they just kind of have in the back of their mind, oh, this is you know something I should think about when I'm maintaining the park and going out there. Just something for them to keep in mind when they are doing their maintenance. And the division will also complete an annual progress report that details what advances have been made towards the Natural Research Management Plan's goals. And then, if necessary, they can also explain how the goals and objectives have been adapted. Um, so one of the biggest things to know about the Natural Resource Management Plan is that it's an adaptive plan and it grows over time. It's not going to be the same forever. Um, since it is part of accreditation, it will um, be under review when accreditation cycle is over. But um, the main goal of the Natural Resource Management Plan is to serve the park system as best as it can. So um, if goals and objectives need to be changed or adaptive, we welcome that with the plan. All right, do you have any questions for me? Well, that was pretty impressive. How, where, how close is the plan to completion? I have completed a final version of the plan. Okay. Um, I'm still kind of going over just some little um, fixes here and there, but I would say it's basically completed. Okay. Yeah. Then when that's done, Zach, will we have an opportunity to see that? Yeah, I think we can definitely share that with you. I think it's something we can uh, share with the community as well. Awesome. Yeah, I'm interested in some of the measurables. Anxious to see. And certainly appreciate the work you've done on that. Um, so, are you you're a college student? I am, yes. Where do you go to school? I go to Ohio State. Okay, and what's your major? I study environmental science, okay. so this is kind of right up my alley. Well, I, I thought that was really impressive, so appreciate all the work you've done on that. Anybody else have any questions? Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Nicely done. I Just, uh, you know, how, how would you foresee it being implemented? Um, I think it kind of depends on looking at the different resource and stewardship goals. Obviously, some of them, like the creation of the park categories, um, as I said, I've created um, most of the plans, so those are already um, created. And I think that that is one step that we could, you know, honestly put out to park employees now. Um, but then some of the other goals, like creating collaboration between different agencies, that kind of takes a while. But I think kind of breaking down all the different goals, all the different goals have um, objectives tied to them. And there are definitely some objectives that you know, are more obtainable than others and some that you have to work toward over time. Fantastic. You've obviously put a lot of thought into that. Well done. Thank you. Trinity, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And good luck going back to school. Thank you. All right. Division report. I assume that's uh, Mr. Zach over here since he's the only one sitting over here. <laughs> good evening, everyone. And uh, awesome job by Trinity. Yeah, she that's... has done a phenomenal job for us this summer. Uh, we'll be sad to see her go. I'm glad she's going back to a, a great school, OH. Um, the, you know, she did an awesome job with this, and I think it's great. You know, when we hire people, we want to make sure that it's mutually beneficial. Uh, we're looking to get something out of that employee, but they also need to get something out of us. And I think when you see something like this, um, it's just really telling the show. She she's doing this for a living. After she graduates from college, she wants to be in environmental science, and to do a natural resource management plan really benefits her as her as she continues her studies and grows professionally. And then this is something that we can use well into the future. So it's, this was an awesome project. Hats off to Trinity. She did a phenomenal job. Yeah, I, that's you're exactly right. I don't think there's a whole lot of folks looking for entry-level jobs that have already done a resource management plan. No. So good job. Okay, so tonight for the division report, um, the, the photo of the, for this month is a group from our volunteer event last week uh, on Monday, July 31st. We had... Um, Folks from Be Hope Church come out. This is a photo of a couple of the volunteers, and we'll have more photos here in a little while. Um, but it was a great photo. We had a lot of people come out for that event. Uh, starting with the Senior Center, uh, coming up next Wednesday, August 16th, from noon to 1.30 at Dominic Lafino Park is our Corn Roast. And it is one of our most popular events of the year uh, where you can get corn, ribs, and all kinds of different sides and desserts. Uh, and thank you to uh, Family Hearing Centers for sponsoring this event. So coming up uh, in about a month on Friday, September 15th, is our annual garage sale. And that's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that is in the overflow parking lot behind the Senior Center. It's free admission and open to all. And members who wish to sell items can buy a booth for $20. Moving on to recreation. Uh, last Monday was National Night Out. 
from 6 to 8.30 over at Rotary Park. Uh, this was in partnership with the police department. There were over 300 people that attended this event for various police demos, food trucks, uh, inflatables, care flight, uh, get to meet the new canine, Mickey, uh, a lot of fun. And I hope this is an event that continues to grow year after year with the police department. So our summer concert series came to a close. We had eight concerts with 1,690 attendees. It was a great year. There are also two children's puppet shows with about 215 attendees. And we would like to thank all of our sponsors, the Dayton Children's Hospital, the Green Optimists, Beaver Creek Women's League, and the American Legion Post 763. Our summer day camps also just recently came to a close. We offered eight weeks of summer camp this year we had 578 camper registrations. Uh, and a big, huge thank you to all our campers and their families, uh, the incredible camp staff for pulling off another great year of camp, uh, and Fairbrook Elementary School for allowing us to use their facilities. We also uh, wrapped up specialty day camps for 2023. Uh, thanks to our partners, we offered uh, many new camps this year, amazing athletes, uh, Skyhawks, Purple Paintbrush, Piano Preparatory School, Stemily Studios, and Beaverview Bowl. This is, these are, again, very popular camps throughout the summer. And moving on to parks. Um, like I said, this past Monday, July 31st, was uh, trail development at Springhouse Park. Um, thank you to all of the volunteers that came out for this event. We had over 120 people come out on that evening, um, about 100 from Be Hope Church, an additional 20 that came that signed up through our city website to come out and help remove honeysuckle and brush and weeds to develop a trail through the new park. Uh, and then also we had a group uh, from Patterson Park uh, Church. They had a youth group come out to help finish up some of the work that wasn't completed uh, the last Monday. So thank you to all of the volunteers. Uh, you can see a photo here to the right. And then this next slide has just a, a few photos of other volunteers there that evening. Um, lots of smiles, a lot of fun. Uh, thank you again to everybody who came out to help develop a trail system. Uh, it's really incredible work, and it's great to see the community come together. Uh, Seville Farm Estates, we also had that same uh, Patterson Park Church youth group uh, install 100 yards of playground mulch at, Patterson, at, sorry, at Seville Farm Estates Park. Um, it's another great volunteer opportunity for groups that want to come help us out doing a project is installing playground mulch. I know it can seem like a monumental task when you're moving a mountain of mulch um, but when you get a big group together it's a great team building uh, exercise and it's a lot of fun uh, so thank you to the Patterson Park Church youth group for coming out to Seville Park to install playground mulch and finally coming up is the Springhouse Park ribbon cutting so here uh, just in a couple weeks on Wednesday August 23rd at 6 p.m. meeting at Springhouse Park uh, arrive at off, the Pat off of Patterson Road which is in between Grange Hall and the 675 overpass, closer uh, to the 675 overpass, is a gravel parking lot. Um, arrive there, and at 6 o'clock we'll have a ribbon cutting where we will officially open the park to the public so that they can go out and explore the new trails that were created and just explore the property in general uh, just to see what uh, is out there and see how great that piece of land is. Uh, our staff has been working on mowing down all of the, the open field areas so that it's a little bit more accessible for everyone. Um, but I, I'm really excited to get the public out there just to explore and see what's out there. And with that, I would take any questions you may have. So the trails are not quite ready to be used yet, or they are? The trails, they've been created. We still have a little bit of cleanup left to do, um, so they're not officially open yet. They'll open on August 23rd. So are, will mulch be spread, or how, how are the trails look I guess yeah it'll just basically be mowed down either be dirt or okay. vegetation that's been mowed down trimmed down okay. um, but there's just there's trash that's out there there's some oh. barbed wire fencing there's some just some stuff that needs cleaned up and we want to make sure that uh, for the most part all of that's cleaned up before we open it up to the public yeah, they, some, oh did, I'm sorry uh, no, go ahead at some point are you go are you planning to make the trails mulch or you know like the ones that are in the woods or so it Score. Yeah, yeah, there'll be, you know, the, obviously like with the trails that are, that's there now, that, you know, that may modify or change a little bit mm -hmm. through the development of the park. Sure. Um, what's there is, will most likely be the kind of the shell of one of the, like, main arteries of okay. the trails going up on that westernmost side mm -hmm. of the park. Uh, again, it may change. But there's going to be other projects for, like, little walk bridges and stuff like that. 
there might be areas where it's a little bit more wet there might be gravel or mulch but mm -hmm. there a lot of the trails will be just be natural surface so they may be dirt grass there could be some mulch in spots uh, but then as the park is developed uh, there will be uh, trails that are paved or more maintained trails do you have a how much like is it a mile two miles how much has been completed I know the ultimate goal but where are we now as far as just if you go for a hike are you going on a short little one yeah so <laughs> there's we don't have it mapped out quite yet yeah. but when I went out and walked it the other day it's a little over a mile if you kind of walk from where the parking lot is uh, you know south to kind of the top of where the hill is mm -hmm. and back is a little over a mile um, I don't have an exact distance yet, but I mean, again, folks will be able to go out there if they don't want to walk up and down the bigger hill there, they sure. can they can stop short. Or if they just want to park and go for a little bit of a walk, they certainly can. I think when we, you know, when we open up the park, it's mm -hmm. really just going to be free ex exploration. Yeah. Just go out there and see what's out there. So it's an up and back trail, not a... It's an up and back. And then what we'll probably do is maintain, like, the grass will and the open fields will grow back up. Mm -hmm. We'll maintain a mode trail so that folks can walk through the woods and then come back through a grass mode trail, or they could turn back around and come through the woods as well. Okay. Yeah, and as the as the park develops, Candy, I think all those pieces will connect in some yeah. manner eventually. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah um, I know they will eventually. I was just curious if I went out tomorrow, what would I find? Yeah, your best bet you know? right now would be up and back. Yeah, uh, but I will so. tell you, the trail that was done is is amazingly smooth for how quickly the folks have been in there. There was some stump removal that needed to be done, which yeah. some small stuff that may have already been done, I don't know. But like, as Zach said, other than a couple places where some you know, needed bridges, it's it's pretty smooth. There is some incline to it, but it's not bad. No. And I think there's there's one section along the highway on the westernmost side of the property that I think was some sort of like agricultural like farm trail that the farmer at some time used to, to move some equipment back and forth. So we utilized some of that. Um, also, you're using utilizing like game trails. So from like from the deer, there's already a rough trail that's there. Yeah. Um, so as the trail was created, we did not cut down any big trees. It was all honeysuckle and weeds and other brush. Yeah. Well, I remember when we did the tour, kind of what it looked like. So I was just curious, like after looking at the master plan, where what little part are, is open now for the public to go see? Yeah. So that answered my question. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. The way it um, it's. You, you, from the area where the gravel parking lot is now, or you can't see a whole lot. You kind of see that lower end. But where you come out at the top, you get to see kind of the over, you get past the peak, so you see the back half down the Ankeny yeah. side. So it's, it's, it was pretty good. I was, I was pleasantly surprised at how clear it was. And I'm getting ahead of myself in the board time, but yeah. the volunteer group that came through, I, I said earlier before the meeting, it was like a swarm of locusts. It was amazing how, and at the, at the end, it was, like I, I'm trimming this tree back just a little bit more, so it's. I mean, it was detail work at the end. They were raking every inch of that path, and it, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm just so excited for the public to get out there to see that piece of property. It's what you see from the road versus what you see when you walk through it are yeah. two completely different things. Uh, and I think when folks are out there, they will really appreciate for how one how big the piece of property is. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, you don't realize how big 148 acres is until you're out there and amongst it. It's big. Uh, but there's just, when you're back in there, it's so peaceful and quiet. And uh, when you kind of think about you're along a highway and so, several busier roads, uh, it's very peaceful. So I, I really hope people get out there to enjoy it and just explore and check it out. Thanks, Zach. Yeah. All right. I was giving you a second to sit back down because the next section of business is usually where someone from the staff shares some volunteer upcoming volunteer oppor opportunities with us. Yeah, always opportunities to volunteer. The senior center is always looking for uh, volunteers, whether that be um, escorts or drivers or just helping out with some of the senior center operations, working the front desk or the library. Um, if you're looking to help out at the senior center, please reach out to them and they will be able to find a great opportunity for you. Uh, and then again, there's always park improvement projects, whether you're service group, scout, church group, or just a, a group of friends that want to get together uh, and do something to help make parks a little bit nicer, whether it be installing playground mulch or uh, doing some other sort of project maybe out at Springhouse Park. There's always opportunities there. And then finally, in recreation, there's always opportunities to volunteer at different events and uh, help out with Fourth of July committee. Cool. Thank you, Zach. Then uh, that moves us into new business. Um, you know, the only item we have for new business is related to you know, something that the board's been working on, um, relationships with some of our partners here in the city. 
um, anybody that follows, I sort of say is regular viewer of this programming, anybody that follows the parks know that we do a, an annual volunteer recognition in April. One of the things we changed this year is to focus on people that actually come out and volunteer specifically for park-related events, and which kind of left um, kind of a gap in how we communicate with some of our partners, and those are folks in the community that that may not be officially city affiliated, but uh, provide a recreational service that we don't necessarily provide as a city group. And uh, we'll be hosting an event uh, coming up in September to try to encourage networking collaboration uh, and to share our appreciation of those groups. So uh, those of you, and you know who you are, will receive invitations sometime in the next uh, week or so. All right. Anybody else have anything to say about that? See no unscheduled visitors, which moves us into action items, and uh, we've got a couple things related specifically to the partner lunch that we're working on, um, but that'll move us right into board time. And, uh, Candy, you mind starting? Wow. Well, first of all, big thank you to Trinity. That, that's an amazing project that you put together, and it was nice. So thank you for doing that for the city. And then, Zach, like you said, that trail when we went out and toured, and before it was open to the public and we went and we got to the top and it, it just looked it's like, wow, this is just really cool. So it's worth taking the walk if you haven't and try to be at the top of that just to look out and see what and envision what that park is going to look like because it's going to be pretty neat once it's all complete. So, that's it. Thank you. To uh, expand on what Candy said, um, I'd like to encourage everybody to come out to the ribbon cutting in a couple weeks. I think that'll be a great opportunity to see what's out there and um, maybe even if you have questions, ask some questions. Um, I'm going to throw that out there just so, you know, be prepared, Zach. Um, but I think it'll be great for people to, to actually see what it's going to look like. So I'd like to encourage people to do that. Right back I also would like to say thank you to Trinity. Uh, we worked a couple events, and uh, her passion for the parks was fantastic. And wish you well at uh, probably the best university in this country. Go Bucks! In the state, maybe. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. I mean, it was, your your presentation is fantastic, and I really do wish you good luck. Um, as far as the park, you know, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I know my family has been looking forward to having opportunities to go out and explore. And then, you know, lastly, uh, the volunteer opportunities. You know, there's a lot of those available, and um, you know, we couldn't do a lot of the things that we've that we've seen done in you know, these presentations tonight without the volunteer opportunities. And I would encourage everybody to continue to reach out, and uh, I'm sure there's somewhere you guys can use them. But uh, it's a big thank you, and and it helps helps maintain our parks and and make them as wonderful as they are. A uh, couple things I will uh, uh, echo the the uh, good words of support for Trinity and a fine job there. Um, Matt and I may have different opinions on best institutions, but that's okay for another time. Um, uh, big thanks to all the folks that came out to the help uh, to help clean up Springhouse Park again. Um, it was amazing uh, to see how. Um, I mean, it, I, yeah, unless you were there, like I looked at my watch, it was 6.34, we started at 6 o'clock, and the bulk of the clean-out was done. Now, they found plenty to stay busy for the rest of the time, but, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, and then, this most people may know this already, um, since we last met, the city has voted to put a levy on the ballot for, um, for November to support this park, so I encourage you all to do your homework and vote uh, when that comes up. Um, I think that's it. Eric, before you go on, yeah. that levy is more, is, will cover more than just the park. Right. So, um, it's more than just Springhouse Park. Right. 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 That park, it's for other things as well. And it's important to look at all those other things that will also be covered with that levy because it, I've seen some Facebook posts and things that people are like, I don't, you know, it's just that park. It's not just that park. The park's. All of our parks need something. So, you know, you're for the parks, not for the parks. It's, that's not what I'm saying. Is just make sure you know all the issues that are on it. Oh, that's a great point, Candy. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, there are plenty of resources out there to 
talk, share more information about that uh, on the city's website. Um, I've seen on the city's social media posted information just so people can be aware. And, well, you may not know as a voter, if you just show up on the polls that day and read that issue, all it's going to say is they levy to support parks. It's not going to tell you anything else. So Kenny's absolutely right. You should do your homework no matter where you fall on a lot of support um, just so you're educated when you make that call. So thank you. Um, I have nothing else. If nobody else has anything else, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. I will motion to adjourn. A second? Aye. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.